Hello guys, this is Hassan from HTFX and let's talk about United Airlines, okay? Now, what I see about United Airlines is actually some type of, in the long term, bearish, but for short term, a bullish situation. And let me try to explain. Now, uh, what I can see is what the chart has given us is that we have some type of something like uh, this type of a move that is broken, okay, and then something started from here. Now, if I want to take what started from the down, I would think you're looking for something like this. So we would have a wave A somewhere here and a wave B somewhere around here, okay. Now, and whatever this move is this probably triangle an X wave? Whatever this move was probably ended here too. So on one low, on one lower, bigger degree, actually, I would say we ended something here. So so far so good. Now after this, what we need to figure out is the following. Now we need a horizontal ray. This is the start point of our a wave this is the end point of our wave a what we do is we take our fib level and put it from here to here as we can see the b wave does not come back all the way to 618 so what it means it means that whatever this move is has to be a zigzag now what i think after what's going on here now that we are confident because this move has already passed it looks to me like this is a C wave. Now you may think to yourself, how is this a C wave? Well, let's try to figure out. Now, we, first of all, we should write to ourselves what we are in. Now we are in a zigzag. In a zigzag, wave A, wave A is an impulsive move. Okay. Now wave B is a corrective move. And wave C is then another impulsive move. But unlike wave A, it can be terminal as well. So what it means is this. When we are looking for an impulsive move, usually we are looking for something like this. So we are looking for wave 1, wave 2, and we are looking for wave 3 that is extended. Okay. Even though first wave or the fifth wave can be extended as well. And this is the type of uh, move that we are looking for, for an impulsive move. So, and that we think will be the C wave in our case. So if I want to label it on the lower time frame, I should be looking for something like, let's choose this color. So it should be something like this. So you need wave one, you need wave two, and you need wave three. You need wave four and you need wave five. Now, as you can see, our move doesn't look like it, but this is the why I wrote terminal. Now, in a terminal move, things are a little bit more interesting. Now, even if you uh, don't know about this impulsive waves, I did some videos about it to how to uh, properly talk about impulsive waves. But let me actually uh, talk a little bit about it here. The first wave in an impulsive move always has to be an impulsive of its own. So it has to be labeled on one lower degree this time. Let's choose some other color. Okay, like this. As the third wave, as the fifth wave. But the second wave and the fourth wave should be labeled with ABCs. Now, why? Because both are corrective waves. Now, what makes the fifth wave of this impulsive move interesting is it can be a terminal too, just like zigzag. A zigzag wave A is impulsive, so on one lower time frame, you need an impulsive move. For the B wave, you need a corrective wave, just like second or the fourth wave. And now on the C wave, you need this impulsive wave that's looking just like this. Or you can have a terminal impulsive move, what we call, or you can call it ending diagonal as well, that will actually, uh, it will be with the numbers such as this one, but 
all of them are corrective. So in a normal classical impulsive move, just like I wrote here, on the lower degree should be impulsive here, impulsive on the third wave, impulsive on the first wave, impulsive on the fifth wave. Now in a terminal impulsive move, the first wave is corrective, second wave is corrective, third wave is corrective, fourth wave is corrective, and fifth wave is corrective as well. Okay, they usually look like uh, wedges. Look at this. So we have something like this, and we have something like this. Now, when you uh, draw two to four trend line here, it has to be clean, but it can be pierced by the parts of wave five, okay? And the one to three trend line, we just um, usually draw it to find out this uh, wedge type of shape, okay? And what makes this um, terminal move interesting is this. Now, um, you need to take the time taken for wave C to form. So our wave C started from here and ended all the way here through. Now, what do I do here? Now, I take my Fibonacci time zone tool, okay? And I take this time and I take 0 0.5 of it, okay? And I put it on the right side of this C wave. Why I need it? Well, this tool helps me to figure out something. If this is really a terminal move, the price action that is started after the fifth wave, thus the C wave is finished, has to come all the way back to its start point, which is the end of B wave, in less or the same time as uh, like this 50%, okay? So I think I <laughs> what I said, this doesn't make sense. Sentence-wise, so let me rephrase it. We took the 50% of the time. This is the maximum time that it can come here, okay? So the price started here, here, here. Should have come like this. It can even come earlier, like in our case. If it did, if it did go like this, then it's a problem. Then uh, either this, where you put your fifth wave is mistake or uh, this idea doesn't work, okay? Now, as you can see, the, the market confirms that this is a terminal move by coming back to here, due time and the price as well. So look, this, uh, this structure here proved us in time and price together. Okay, if you watch my other videos, I talk about this all the time. So the time and price here. So what we need right now? Well, after this, we should actually go one degree lower to understand what is going on better, okay? So this is what I am looking for. The fifth wave, we think, is done somewhere around here. So does the C wave, okay? Well, if we have something like this, we should think about our possibilities. Now, one of our possibilities can be this being an impulsive move actually why we have a first wave we have a second wave we have a third wave also maybe i'm mistaken and this is the end of fifth wave which is actually more likely but so we have first wave second wave third wave and a fourth wave and a fifth wave as an impulsive move but if we go back Go back, back, back. Now, if you have one, two, three, four, five here, what does this mean? Well, it means that we are now, can, does this mean, for example, one, two, three, four, five, what it finished on the bigger degree. So let's go back to weekly chart. Now, if I say here, it's one, two, three, four, five, just like here, what did it finish or what did it start? Okay, so can this be a wave one on the bigger degree? Now, if it's wave one, you have wave two, wave three, where this, this thing will go? 
It means that this is very unlikely to be wave one, but this is just a wave A. If this is a wave A, it means that the only wave A that is uh, impulsive corrective move, only wave A, look, because we are saying wave A, we are looking for a corrective move. And the only corrective move with, a, with the, its first wave A is impulsive, is a zigzag. It means that we are market is doing another zigzag. Okay. If we are looking for another zigzag now, what we should do? Okay, now we go back. This is the fifth wave. Okay, now the market look making slightly lower. So what do we need? Well, we need to know some things. First, first things first, we should take our horizontal ray and put it here exactly where this fifth wave has ended and exactly our uh, this starts okay so and then where does our impulsive move wave a ends here so what i want to do is i want to take the fib not from the highs not from the lows but from where the wave ends and where it starts okay mm, from here to here of course no I'm sorry. <laughs> I sometimes make this mistake. Okay. Now, I am looking for this B wave to not finish above 618. Now, why is that? Well, if you're looking for a zigzag, it cannot finish above 618. So, this is the, my limit. So I put it something like here. I'm not saying it cannot pass. I'm saying it should not end, okay? So parts of B wave can actually go for, go higher, but it should finish below 618. And I think it should finish somewhere between 618 and uh, 0 0.5. Now, why you may think that? Well, because after wave A and after wave B, we need a wave C of a zigzag, okay? Now, wave C of a zigzag can be actually three different uh, parts uh, in three different situations we have. Well, if our C wave is less than 618 of wave A, look, let's say that our B wave is finished here and we have a C wave something like this, okay? It means that we will have a truncated zigzag, which actually for me, uh, the most likely scenario. Why? Because if we will have a truncated zigzag, it means that this will make a new low, but after this, it will go back 80% retraced because in a truncated zigzag, the price has to, after it's done, so let's say it will go like this and it will be done, it has to take from the start to the end, we should take a FIB level and it should go all the way back to 80%. That's the rule, okay? It should go to 80%. Now, if you will have a normal zigzag, which is between zero, uh, it's, it's between 618 and 100, it means that we have a little bit more problem for the company. It means that it will go, well, actually it cannot go. Look, it will be a minus something. So the only possibility here is actually this being a truncated zigzag <laughs> because if it's if you take the 100 it's so much trouble for the company so that's the that's the deal that's the deal guys that's the deal so if you want to trade this you should try to find what kind of b wave we are having as of now and i would wait somewhere around here and i would take a short this is what I would do. But of course, uh, it depends on your fundamental analysis. If you think that the US government will help and uh, it will jack up the prices now, okay. But if you have a second virus situation or this uh, stock market is going lower again or blah, 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 it means that there's a risk of going if this virus situation will go worse or something and this airlines will be more under trouble this scenario is actually, uh, could be. So I hope 
you can take this as just one example, which can be, of course, completely wrong. But it does look like uh, this is what it looks like. So just take this as an educational, it's not advice or something like this. But I hope this helps to just give you one idea. Thank you so much, guys. And see you on the next one.